Hello and welcome back to the Agenda Podcast here on the Blood Red channel. I'm your host, Edward Kay, and I'm joined today by the Liverpool Echo's very own Paul Ghost. And we're going to be discussing Liverpool's current midfield woes, with it being January, obviously, the January transfer window open. I know a lot of fans wanting FSG to dip in their pocket and uh, buy a new midfielder. How much do you think uh, it's imperative that Liverpool do sign a midfielder this January, Ghosty, and is just one enough? Oh, I mean, they, they absolutely do need the midfielder, don't they? I think that's been apparent for, for months, really. Um, but I think it's become a little bit of a a fix-all thing now for, for a lot of supporters, where they just think if they get a midfielder in, everything will go back to as it was and Liverpool will be able to to crack on. But I think, I think the problems are more deeply rooted than that now, sadly. Um, I just think when, when you've got... A player like Harvey Elliott, for example, and, and I hope this doesn't come across like I'm, I'm digging him out because I really don't want to. But, you know, <clears throat> he's a young lad who's learning his trade at the thick end of the game, you know, at a club with the demands like Liverpool. He's only 19 years of age, learning a new position as well because, you know, he spent most of his career on the right of a front three. So, Jürgen Klopp's trying to turn him into a central midfielder. And if everything else is operating as it should, then that's when you can kind of give Elliot the chance to to come in and, and get the experience and the the necessary steps to improve and get better. But at a time when there's there's so many issues elsewhere in the team, injuries in midfield, whether it's you know issues up front and you know injuries at the back, there's just so many problems. I think your 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 defense becomes very unprotected when you're asking a young lad who's not necessarily the most defensive minded to play in that midfield three and. When there are injuries to Thiago, we've seen that earlier in the season. And obviously, Jordan Henderson has been injured. And, and I don't think he's been fit all season, to be perfectly honest. And he obviously sat out the game against Brentford because of the concussion protocols. And Fabinho's been in and out and up and down with his form. Um, it's difficult to ask a young lad like Harvey Elliott to to do the, the dirty work, if you like, in Liverpool's midfield. And there's plenty of that to go around with the way the clock typically likes his midfielders to perform. So there just seems to be so much wrong in, in that area of the pitch. Um, and then you, you look at someone like Arthur Mello, who came in as a an emergency stopgap signing. He's only played 13 minutes. Um, James Milner's currently out with a hamstring injury. There's just so many problems that have blighted that area of the pitch. And, of course, they do need the midfielder. And, you know, it would be great if they could get one in this month. But... I don't necessarily think it's a kind of magic wand now either where someone comes in, they start playing regularly and get up to speed and Liverpool go back to what they were doing last season. I think it's more deeply rooted than that. Uh, You're asking how many do they need? Right now, at least one. Um, In the longer term, in the summer, when Abby Cater and Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and James Milner and Arthur Mellon might not even be at the club, then you're looking at two, at least maybe three. And that then becomes a real kind of difficult situation with the money that it costs to bring in two or three quality midfielders. So, uh, particularly if Liverpool don't get top four, so it's a it's a real fine balancing act at the moment. They definitely need one this month, but going from what Jurgen Klopp was saying recently, I'm not too convinced that they're going to be doing much. If I'm honest, yeah, and obviously you mentioned there most of the personnel that are available to Klopp in midfield and. I think one thing that most people would notice is the age profile. There's, there's quite a bit of disparity there between youth yeah. and experience and Liverpool haven't really got any midfielders pushing for a starting place in their mid-20s. Do you think FSG have somewhat ended up bit, caught in a bit of a bind here? Because obviously players in their mid-20s are, are bound to be the most expensive. You know, the only real midfield signing they've made in recent years, Thiago joined at, I think it was 29, so... How how much of an issue do you think that's going to prove when they're looking at looking to dip into the market? Yeah, huge. You know, Thiago was a, a little bit of an opportunistic signing, really. His contract was was dwindling down at Bayern Munich. They got him for a relatively good fee of twenty five million, was it something like that? Um, very much a break from the mould of Liverpool, Liverpool's traditional kind of transfer work. When you think of the players who they brought in, you know, in recent years, Jota, Ibrahim Canate, Luis Diaz. Darwin Nunes and, and obviously Cody Gakpo, they're all early 20s who were ready to take their next step in the game. Thiago would, had only ever played for Bayern Munich and Barcelona and, and had done it all and, and won it all in the game. So his signing was, was a little bit different. Um, you look at someone like Naby Keita, who should be approaching the prime of his career, um, 
you know, for 101 different reasons and maybe for just for one specific reason, it hasn't worked out for him at Liverpool. Um, he should be someone who, who should be contributing, should be able to be, be contributing in the, the prime of his career. But elsewhere, you know, Liverpool have either got Harvey Elliott and um, Fabio Carvalho, you know, 19 and 20, or they've got James Milner and Jordan Henderson, who were 36 and 32, I think. Um, obviously, Thiago's in his 30s. Fabinho's the only one who is kind of operating in his prime years at the moment, isn't he? Obviously, Cater should be, but as we say, the injuries have kind of just completely, you know, killed his momentum stone dead over the last few years. So, um, it, it's it's the area of the pitch that needs the most attention, isn't it? But it's also the area of the pitch that will probably cost the best part of 150 to 200 million to adequately resolve. Um, and at a time when Liverpool may not even be in the Champions League next season, a club who was so dependent on the money that comes in from that because of the way that the the club is run from the ownership model, it's um, it's worrying really. I hope I'm not painting a, a massively negative picture just from the fallout of Brentford on Monday night, but longer term, there, there are huge issues. Um, it can be resolved with significant investments, but... Is that going to be forthcoming? Particularly if they're out of the Champions League, it's going to be it's going to be difficult. But no doubt about it, they need at least one top quality midfielder um, this month. I'd say whether that happens or not, I'm not sure. But looking ahead to the summer months, you know, they need at least two, maybe even three. Yeah, you mentioned there. Obviously, midfield is the area that needs the most attention and. You briefly mentioned the signing of Cody Gakpo. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter when he was signed criticising the transfer, you know, saying this isn't what we needed. We needed a midfielder. Not sure I necessarily agree with that after watching Oxlade Chamberlain start on the left three games in a row. Mm -hmm. We obviously did need a left sided attacker. But do you think that Gakpo signing has impacted the ability to sign a midfielder in January? And if so, do you think they've prioritised wrong? Yeah, I think Klopp said something similar, didn't he, in his, um, in his press conference? Trying to remember which one it was now, they're all coming thick and fast. But he said recently that um, essentially they, they, they don't have a bottomless pit of money, and if 40 million has been earmarked for Cody Gakpo, that's inevitably going to impact on what they can spend, certainly this month. Um, have they prioritised right? I mean, Diogo Jota's going to be out till February, we, we think. Luis Diaz out till March. Um, going to be difficult for both of those to come in when they return and hit the heights that we know that they can reach straight away. I think Jot has had a, a bit of a nightmare of a season really when he picked up that hamstring injury in Singapore, was it, or Thailand. Never really gained any momentum as a result of it, so his season almost could be a write-off. Diaz was probably Liverpool's best outfield performer before that injury at Arsenal, but again he's going to be coming back into the team in March at the earliest and that's well, six months, six months out injured. That's a that's a long time for any, you know to expect anyone to come in and, and be immediately flying. So um, you can debate that one. To be fair, it's a good question. Um, I think it was if they only had forty million to play with, for example. I think they probably hedged the bets and thought we'll get someone in attacker wise, and then we'll just continue to kind of plug on with what we've got in midfield and hopefully we can just somehow get into this top four, get the, the money that comes with being in the top four and just forget about what has been a little bit of a, a risable season really. Certainly it, on the injury front and the performances largely have been underwhelming, haven't they? I can only think of maybe two or three afternoons where Liverpool have looked like Liverpool. Um, but um, I don't think all hope is lost. I think the I think they, they still will finish in the top four. I don't think Newcastle are going to be, um, you know, given a sustained, prolonged chase for that one. I watched them against Arsenal yesterday and they defended really, really well. But I think now the, the mentality with teams will, will change with Newcastle and I think they'll be up against a lot more packed defences and men behind the ball and I'm not sure they've got the quality to, to more, more often than not win those type of games. Obviously, Drew with nil nil with Leeds in the, in the last home game and that could be indicative of, of what's to come for them and, and Liverpool just have to improve really and, and just make sure that they are in that top four come what may. 
Yeah, and one player Liverpool being linked with uh, fairly consistently at the moment, um, Mateus Nunes, was a player that we were also being heavily linked with in the summer. Obviously didn't buy him, Wolves have picked him up, only to now be linked again with him for obviously more money. Then you look at, I mean, the price, £112 million that Chelsea are supposedly going to be paying for Enzo Fernandes. I'm not sure that's ever a price Liverpool are going to be paying, but another player we had long-standing interest in. Do you think there's an argument that missing out on midfield targets has become a bit of an issue for Liverpool? Not sure. Um, I think with too many who obviously went to Real Madrid, I think Liverpool found out fairly early on that he had his heart set on Real Madrid and sometimes you hold your hands up and say, well, fair enough, you know, if, you, if he wants to join Real Madrid, who probably the biggest club in the world, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. Um, but with Nunes, you know, Liverpool do have a long-standing interest. We were told that earlier this week. Um, he is someone they are looking at as a potential incoming, but it wouldn't be for this month because he's already played for Sporting in August and played for Wolves, so he can't play for the third team. Liverpool can sign him this month, but they can't play him, so it's a little bit of a... Um, be a bit unnecessary, wouldn't it? But Liverpool do have interest in him. I think if he really wanted them in in the summer months, I think they probably would have got there ahead of Wolves. Um, for whatever reason, they've opted to keep the powder dry and maybe just monitor him in the Premier League and, and see how he gets on there. He hasn't exactly pulled up any series for Wolves at the moment. Um, obviously, they're way down the bottom fighting them against relegation, aren't they? Um, but he's certainly a player Liverpool like, maybe someone who they can look at in the summer months when they will be looking to hopefully do a little bit more than just just the one midfielder. You know, we've spoken there about maybe two or three, haven't we? But certainly Matthias Nunes is someone they like. Um, too many they have to hold hands up and accept that he wants to go to Real Madrid. Um, and Enzo Fernandez, you know, I've no doubt that they've looked at him at some point and viewed him in in. Um, the Portuguese league at Benfica, but have ultimately decided that he's not for them. And, and Chelsea have got a bit of a free run at him now. And I, I think for the price that they're, they're talking, it's just absolutely astounding. I think before the World Cup, Enzo Fernandez was being touted as maybe a 50, 60 million euros type of player. And now Chelsea are looking to spend on a club record fee on him. I think Liverpool are going to spend anything around that. I'd much rather it be on, on a Jude Bellingham than an Enzo Fernandez. So, We'll see if Liverpool um, are able to break the the club record fee for for uh, for someone this summer in the centre of the park. Um, hopefully that is Jude Bellingham. We'll see. It's um, a lot of a lot of spinning plates is how it was kind of put to, to me uh, earlier this week when we were making one or two inquiries. So um, I guess Liverpool have just got to make sure that they are in the Champions League and they'll be able to work off uh, list A rather than list B in terms of potential targets. Yeah, we'll come on to the mandatory Bellingham chat as we are talking about Liverpool's midfield. Obviously, the Bellingham to Liverpool hype sort of reached a bit of a fever pitch in the World Cup, thanks in no small part to Agent Trent and Henderson, obviously. But yeah. in the past couple of weeks, it's been I've been hearing a lot, of, lot more rumblings about Real Madrid and things suggesting it might be a bit of a closer battle than we think. Do you think there's any chance that they could pip us to him like they did with Chiuameni? Look, I mean... You're never going to get a, a totally free run on a player like Jude Bellingham, you know, especially if, if you're Liverpool who um, don't necessarily operate at the very top end of, of transfer fees on a regular basis. Um, so, I'd, I, you know, it would be no shock at all if, for whatever reason, Real Madrid did nudge ahead at Liverpool. But I think Liverpool have known for quite some time to be putting in certain like work behind the scenes and it's an open secret now isn't it the Jürgen Klopp is a massive fan of him he spoke at length about him before the um before the Aston Villa game and it, that was interesting for me because you know it wasn't necessarily a case of well Jude Bellingham plays with Dortmund so why are you asking me about him um he was happy to talk about what he's good at what he's great at why he's such a you know an amazing star of the world game so I think it is a little bit of a an open secrets, I think, actually, um, we've done a story on our website today, Klopp quoted in Sport Build, basically saying, you know, we, we are aware of him, we are interested, but there's nothing to update you on at the moment. And, you know, the phrase at the moment was interesting for me. 
So Liverpool will be doing what they need to behind the scenes. I'm sure that they are in touch with both Dortmund and you know Bellingham's parents, who seem to kind of navigate his, his career. He's still only 19, isn't he? So that would make sense. But when Real Madrid are, are kind of rivaling yet, it's um, you can never safely say that you're going to win that race. So it's going to be a difficult one. Liverpool will need to be in the Champions League, I think, to get to Bellingham because both for the money that you get from being in there. And also, I don't think he's going to be wanting to play in the Europa League knowing that he's one of the um, fast emerging midfielders of, of world football. Yeah, FSG obviously made it clear throughout the time at Liverpool that getting Champions League football is, is a must for the way the club operates. And I wanted to sort of finish on FSG. Do, there's a lot of people out there, you know, arguing that they've they've let this midfield age and it's, it's become somewhat stagnant over the past few years. But... Do you think there's any argument that it's it's sort of crept up on them, like it has the rest of us, really? You know, I'm I'm not sure many people saw this situation coming last season when Liverpool were chasing an unprecedented quadruple and we were being talked about as having better depth than Manchester City. You know, so do you think it, it has just crept up on them, or have they been a bit, you know, negligent in not refreshing that midfield sooner? That's a that's a good question um, because you do look back to, you know. March, April time, Liverpool were absolutely flying. And they were leaving out. I remember four players being left out of match day squads most weeks. And it was usually Gomez, Oxley chamberlain Curtis Jones. You know, players you didn't play every week, but players you'd have no issue if they were, you know, starting games, certain games. Um, so that's a tough question. It, you know, the... Um, Opinions swing, don't they? Pretty much on whatever's happened in the last 15 minutes of, of games, never mind the results. Um, certainly think they, need, they needed to, to address it with with possibly one um, last summer. They obviously looked at too many and then for whatever reason decided that there was no one else who, um, who could do what he did and they were going to keep the powder dry. Mm. Whether that was for for Bellingham that this coming summer... We'll, we'll see, I guess. But certainly, between finding out the two men he wanted to go to Real Madrid, which is, you know, we were aware of that as early as April. So the club would have known about that even further back, obviously. And getting Arthur Mello on transfer deadline day on loan, there's a lot of room to manoeuvre in between those two deals from both a timescale point of view and, and a quality point of view. You think too many uh, France international, 22, 23 years old, um, one of the kind of big names on, on the on the scene in, in European midfields. And then Arthur Mello's struggled, hasn't he, for the last two or three years with injuries and form and whatever else. Um, there had to be something in between those two respective targets for me. Um you know, it doesn't have to be an either or situation for Liverpool. For whatever reason, that's how it's ended up. Um, so I think the club have made uh, have made an error there. Maybe, you know, Klopp spoke about wanting to take more risks in, a, in the press conference in, in the summer, in August, I think that was. Um, maybe his hands have been tied for whatever reason. Um but certainly, I think something could have been done um, a little bit more proactive than leaving it to um, transfer deadline day for an Arthur Mello. And that was only predicated from Henderson's hamstring injury, which was picked up in the Newcastle win, I think. Um, that was very reactive and maybe a more proactive approach could have been taken. Um, but you can rectify it by making sure you're in the Champions League and then going there. Um, Getting to Bellingham, and I'm sure Liverpool fans will uh, will be over the moon with that. But certainly, there's a long way to go before that happens. Yeah, well, it remains to be seen whether uh, Liverpool will be dipping into their pockets again in the January transfer window. And if they do, I would imagine it would be for a midfielder, hopefully. But that's all we've got time for on the agenda today. Gorsty, thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll catch you next time.